Welcome fellow horror hounds and welcome to the latest episode of Talk and Stalk, your unholy home for horror. I'm your host as always, Barry, and today's podcast is going to be devoted to a psychological horror film released in 78 called Magic. Now, everyone that knows me knows I'm actually a huge fan of psychological horror, and to me, this is one of the very best of its kind. I think that Magic is a film that doesn't really get enough attention, in all honesty. Um, I still know a lot of people that haven't actually seen this film. I'm sure a lot of horror fans have actually heard of it, but I just think it's a film that still quite often gets overlooked. And as I said, released in 78 and directed by the one and only Richard Attenborough, um, I do actually believe of the 12 films that he directed, this is only one of three films that wasn't actually based on actual events. Um, and it's based on a screenplay by William Goldman, who actually wrote the novel upon which this is based. Now, admittedly, I've not actually read the novel. Um, I think that uh, Joseph Levine, that was actually the director of this, uh, had actually acquired the film rights to the novel for a million. And that basically included Goldman's, Goldman's fee to actually uh, write the screenplay. And of course, this film stars Anthony Hopkins long before playing Hannibal Lecter, and he's great in this film. You know, he's he, he's great. I mean, you know, also, um, I do believe that Steven Spielberg had actually even expressed interest in directing this movie, and I believe Robert De Niro was even considered to play Corky, which is the role that actually went to Anthony Hopkins. And, um, you know, it stars Burgess Meredith as well, a very established actor, who I believe Laurence Olivier was originally offered the role, but he was unable to do it. But Burgess Meredith is fantastic in this film um, as Corky's agent, you know, the guy that actually finds him and is, you know, trying to make a success with him. And, you know, he's really, Burgess Meredith's character is really kind of, you know, slick. He's got this kind of very cool, calm uh, demeanour to him. Now, you know, essentially at its core, what this movie is about, it's really about paranoid schizophrenia. This is a film that's very cerebral. It's a movie that manages to be really effectively creepy, in my opinion. Um, I think the dummy, uh, Fats, is actually the creepiest dummy that we've ever actually had on screen, in my opinion. Um, now, Anthony Hopkins, the dummy fat, was actually modelled on Anthony Hopkins himself. And I believe, um, upon seeing facts for the first time, I think Sir, Ant Sir Anthony Hopkins was actually allowed to take the doll home to work with it. Uh, but apparently he wound up being so unnerved by it that he called the consulting ventriloquist in the middle of the night, threatening to throw fats into a canyon if someone didn't come and get the doll. Um, it basically took persuasion and a bit of arm twisting from uh, Sir Richard Attenborough to uh, to basically try and calm him down. I believe that he was even threatening to, to leave the movie. Um, and he actually learnt magic for this film and actually learnt ventriloquism um, for this movie. And this movie actually has what I think is arguably probably the creepiest, scariest trailer to ever be released. Um, I believe the trailer was actually removed from broadcasting stations after parents complained on how scary it was. And I'm sure it, got, it, it gave probably a lot of younger audiences, um, you know, nightmares. But basically, you know, the film is, it, it's basically Anthony Hopkins plays Corky. He's a struggling magician. Uh, he's a guy that doesn't really have any character, no kind of charisma and a really kind of feel for him. Uh, he's trained by uh, an old magician called Merlin, quite appropriately named. And, uh, you know, we get to see him performing this this big stage magic trick. And nobody's paying attention. Everyone's laughing. There's one guy groping a woman and just nobody's... And he's putting his heart and soul into this performance and nobody really cares. And he loses it. And he, basically, Merlin says to him, you're going to have to get some charisma somehow. You're going to have to come up with something. And then we get the introduction to Fats, the dummy. And it really becomes quite the act. Uh, he, he's going on to achieve some success with Fats, the dummy. 
Um, you know, Fats actually does have quite a lot of great lines in this movie. Um, but as I said, he's... I mean, there's a scene, for example, quite early on in the film, and it's the very first scene that we get of Fats and Corky, Hopkins' character, together alone in the room after speaking to the agent. The agent leaves the room and Fats head spins round and he says, do you know what I'm thinking? And he's like, what are you thinking? We're going to be a star. The fact that they're actually in there in a room alone and he's actually corresponding to Fats, you know, clearly something isn't right here. Um, and of course, what we get is, you know, um, Burgess Meredith's character, his agent, actually telling him that, uh, you know, we're going to be able to make a success, etc. Uh, we're going to get you a, a, a pilot on NBC. You know, you're going to be he etching towards the big time here. Um, but they need you to do a medical. And it's the fact that Corky actually says no to the medical clearly indicates that he knows something isn't right. There's a problem. There's something not quite right here. And he refuses, and it's basically a deal breaker as far as he's concerned. He's actually saying that he's not doing this out of principle. And, of course, Burgess Meredith just thinks that, you know, he, he's scared of the success. You know, that some people are scared of, of, of hitting the big time. And he decides to run away. And uh, there's a sense of claustrophobia to this film as well. It goes from the urban city set into the kind of middle of nowhere. And he goes back. And at its core, this film is essentially kind of a love story as well. And it is actually marketed that way um, in the trailer, despite being a really creepy trailer. Is that his high school love that he actually bumps into again. He goes back. He, he you know, he, he doesn't expect her to still be there. Um, but along the way, you know, we kind of get some insight into Corky kind of along the way. You know, we see his childhood home, the fact we he goes to the cemetery where his family are buried. And uh, he actually bumps into his high school love, crush, and um, a romance blossoms. Um, it, it's really quite sad because he doesn't think that she actually remembers him. You know, she takes one look at him and she doesn't. And she actually thinks the same way. Now, she's actually married now. She's actually got a partner. Um, but, of course, a romance does blossom between the two. Um, the problem is there's Fats, the dummy. And, you know, as soon as they get there, it's kind of like, how long are we going to be here? And, uh, you know, the introductory scene of her meeting Fats for the very first time... Um, you know, he looks at her and he says, uh, well, don't just stare at each other, at least grunt at each other. Um, you know, and uh, he actually says, as they're walking along, going back to the cabin, Corky's holding him and Fats actually says, um, oh, she actually held me to my bosom, to her bosom. Um, she must find me irresistible. And then he says, uh, maybe you'll be getting to her bosom soon, but you don't want to make me jealous. And we wouldn't want that. And, you know, there, there's a dark side there, you know, uh, within the subconscious here. And there's a really creepy scene. As I say, this film is really creepily effective in them long lingering shots of fats. And the score is very notable, too, by Jerry Goldsmith. Um, Jerry Goldsmith's score perfectly accompanies this film. Um, it's that kind of string score. It, it's it's very creepy. And as I say, it just complements the film perfectly. We get this really creepy shot of when uh, Corky goes into the toilet. And uh, Fats actually says to him, he says, why you close the door? You go, and he basically, I'm, I'm, I'm going for a piss. Is that all right? And uh, Fats actually says... Um, he says, you're in there thinking about her, aren't you? And he says, pop your head out here a second. And he looks out and uh, sorry. And then he says, you're thinking about her, aren't you? And you just get that lingering, creepy shot of Fats just sitting there in the chair, just staring at Corky. It's just creepy. There's something inherently creepy about dummies. And... You know, Richard Attenborough really does get the most out of facts in this movie with, like I said, them long lingering shots, the score. 
Um, there's a moment in the film that I think is a real highlight of the film, in fact, where Burgess Meredith, his agent, actually manages to track him down. Presumably the taxi driver has, has told him, um, you know, despite Hopkins Corky actually paying off the taxi driver, he's clearly, I think, told him where he is. And um, he shows up and he actually sees an argument between Fats and Corky. Um, and he, he's, he knows right there and then that there's clearly a problem. And he asks him, you know, how long, how long have you been like this? And, you know, Corky claims to be, it's just a rehearsal. They're just playing around. And uh, there's a moment that's just great in which he actually says to him, uh, do us a favour, it should be easy. Um, make Fats shut up for just five minutes. Don't, Fats, no talking for five minutes. And, you know, Corky's, yeah, th you know, this is easy. Of course I can do it. And you can really tell he's struggling. They're sitting there, he's trying to make small talk, but he's really struggling. It's, you know, he's, it's like Corky is no one now. He's absolutely no one without Fats. You know, he's slowly becoming Fats. And he, you can tell he's really struggling. He gets to the two and a half minute mark. You know, before that, he actually says, this is really cruel what you're doing to me. And his agent actually says, I don't mean it for to be, to be. But, you know, this is basically a test. And he can't do it. He gets to the two and a half minute mark. And he brings facts back into play. Into full play and full force. And uh, he tries to stop, obviously, Burgess Meredith's character from actually leaving. Because basically, you know, the world's going to know. The world's going to know that he's not quite right. Some, you know, something's wrong. He's crazy. Um... So Fats basically tells him, you have to stop him. He's the villain here. Don't forget. Never forget. He's the villain. Uh, they're going to, you know, they're going to lock you away. And, you know, uh, Corky's like, you know, how, how do I stop him? How? And he's like, with me. With me. And uh, as he's leaving, he, he gets beaten. He's getting beaten around the head. I, I find it really creepy, actually. He's being smashed across the head with Fats, you know, as he's screaming as he's doing so. And Fats ends up damaged, and of course they have to get rid of the body. And this is again a really creepy moment of the film, I find, is where he's actually dragging him out to the lake. And of course Fats um, is actually looking out the window. So clearly Corky's propped him up against the window, and he's staring. And as he's getting further out to the water, the camera just shows you Fats kind of watching him um, you know, getting rid of the body. It's really creepy that, as I say, like, just that score that accompanies it, um, it really is effective. And, you know, a moment later in the film, the body is found. Uh, there's quite a suspenseful moment, actually, when they're out there on the boat. You know, he's got rid of the body. Um, her husband comes back. And, uh, I mean, clearly she's not happy in a relationship and that. There's actually a moment a little earlier in the movie in which Corky is trying this big kind of grander uh, trick. It, it's basically kind of a psychic connection thing where they pick up the two exact cards. And there's a lot of tension in this scene as well because, you know, he really wants it to go right. And it doesn't at first. And he completely blows his lid. Um, and then, of course, it does happen. This big kind of psychic connection they have. That leads on to kind of the lovemaking scene, which kind of gets me on to another pretty creepy moment. Um, this film is edited really well, in fact. I will say that. The editing is actually top-notch in this film. We get these scenes of this slow lovemaking, but then it cuts to Fats sitting there. And then the next shot, it closes in on Fats. And we get these three camera shots of Fats. While they're making love, he's in the next room sitting there in the chair. It's just very symbolic. It's very creepy. Um... And of course, when they find the body, uh, the husband, you know, uh, trying to get help, you know, there's a bit on the boat, for example, where we actually think that they're probably going to find the body. Uh, there's something caught underneath there and, they're, they're, you know, he's panicking. Corky's really panicking at this moment. Um, and, you know, he's led him out there to basically try and get him to confess that he has actually slept with his slept with his wife. Um, and, yeah, it's actually turns out to be a big a big 
tree, a big branch, you know, it's not actually the body, but they do find the body. And then he goes to the cabin. Um, he realises that this is actually the um, the agent that did actually show up. So Corky has clearly lied. And there's that creepy moment. He actually sees Fats sitting there in the chair as he enters the cabin. And if you look very closely in the background in the shot, Fats' head actually moves. We actually see Fats move. And that's 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 really creepy. And he approaches... And then, of course, he gets stabbed. And again, just 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 a hell of a moment. He he's actually getting stabbed, and uh, he gets killed. And then, of course, we see Corky come from behind the curtain. So Corky was clearly, you know, behind behind Fats. Um, you know, and uh, it really is quite tragic because it really is a love story at its core. Um, he wants a normal life. He wants to run away uh, with Peck. I believe that's her name, who I actually think does a great job in this film. Uh, her, her actress name, Anne-Margaret, I believe it is. Anne-Margaret, I think, does a great job in this film. I think there's real kind of chemistry between the two characters. And, um, of course, you know, he wants to, but Fats won't allow her. He won't allow him, sorry. Um, you know, like a moment where he, he basically tells him, look... Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna go away now you know there's only two people on this honeymoon and then Fats actually comes out and says I'll tell and when you least expect it when you least expect it during a show I'll shout out oh and there's some bodies in uh, in Lake Melody you know his subconscious will not allow him to go after the happiness um, he's you know Fats is very much part of who he is now and, um, you know, it really does get quite dark. And, of course, he actually tells him, you know, um, there's a moment where he, he's basically commanding him around the room to show him that whatever he can do, you know, he can get him to do anything. You know, Fat says crawl, crawl around. Fat says smile. Um, Fat says, um, you know, twirl around. Fat says um, frown. And then Fat says... Go and get a knife. And of course he's shot. And he wants him to go upstairs to kill. To kill her. Um, and of course, you know, near the end we realise that he couldn't do it. And that he's actually stabbed himself. He's actually stabbed himself in the chest. And um, Fats actually says to him, it really is quite... Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Poignant. Um, he actually says to him, why didn't you leave when you had the chance? And he said, well, she'd never leave with me. You know, he said she would have turned me down and uh, I could only get her to open the door by using you. Basically, I couldn't even get her to open the door myself. And he says, you dummy, you schmuck. Um, me and you, it was always you. And uh, of course, you know, Fats is actually in pain himself because... Corky has actually stabbed himself and I do find it really quite sad um, that his existence now is tied to this dummy as I said it, it really is down to paranoid schizophrenia and uh, he actually says don't leave me all alone here um, please come here and um, you know he, he says basically he doesn't want to die I'm hoping I don't go first um, you know, so it really is quite poignant. And as I said, it's really, I, I love movies that are very kind of cerebral. I love films that kind of probe the recesses um, of the mind. And this is film that, this is a movie that certainly does that. And, um, you know, I believe that Jack Nicholson was actually uh, also dubbed to star, but apparently Nicholson turned it down, claiming that he didn't actually want to wear a hairpiece. Um, for this movie it's kind of hard to imagine Jack Nicholson but yeah apparently that was the uh, that was the case um, now I haven't actually read the novel and from what I understand of the novel uh, the character of Merlin is uh, greatly extended upon um, that we actually get to see more of Merlin and we actually get to see more of a, a relationship um, between the two um, now, there is actually a little moment in this film where some... Well, it kind of implies that maybe Fats is actually alive. 
Um, but from what you understand, it was actually a mo- it, it's a moment where Corky has actually sat Fats down in the sofa and he's walking around the room, but Fats eyes actually move. Just for a couple of seconds he actually moved and some people were like, hang on a sec, is he actually alive? Uh, no, he isn't. Um, what it is, uh, I had to listen to the commentary to actually get this, but basically uh, one of the dummy operators had actually just kind of knocked the dummy during that scene. That's all it is. But it's actually gone on to become a topic of discussion. Um, and I believe, you know, the, the dummy in this Fats as well was very much kind of an inspiration for the dummy Slappy um, in the Goosebumps series, obviously written by R.L. Stein. And of course, it, there's also been comparison as well. A lot of comparison to the dummy segment in 1945's Dead of Night, which is a great horror anthology film. It's very much kind of the granddaddy. I believe it was the very first horror anthology movie um, ever made. Um, and it's also interesting that in the closing credits as well for this film, Anthony Hopkins is actually billed twice um, for the characters of Corky and Fats. Um, and I think Richard Attenborough as well actually did a really good job with directing this film as well. Um, I believe that he agreed to direct this and a bridge too far in kind of exchanging um, in exchange for obtaining some financing um, for uh, from Joseph Levine for his dream project, which was Gandhi, which of course you know won an Oscar, won an Oscar for um, Ben Kingsley in the lead role. Um, but yeah, it's uh, Magic's just a great psychological horror film that manages to be creepy. Um, you know, it's one of them movies that, you know, it's kind of slow burning in a way. It's not a film that's, this isn't a film that relies on cheap jump scares or anything like that. It relies on suspense. It relies on its atmosphere. And as I said, Fats the Dummy. There's a real charm to Fats. Um, you know, there's a joke in the movie where he says about, like, um, I think uh, Corky actually makes a threat and actually says to him, look, I'll uh, get hit out on a uh, on a mafia woodpecker, you know, to get you. And he's like, oh, what I wouldn't give for a woodpecker. <laughs> Just, you know, a great little line there in that. Um, but also, you know, again, towards the end of the movie, Fats actually, again, kind of turns, you know, uh, that whole kind of psychic card trick that they do that psychic connection if you will fat completely dampens that completely ruins it and says that he actually tells um peggy that it's basically just a big it's a big ruse it's just a big trick you know that corky actually makes this big kind of song and dance and production about it but he does it to every woman that he's trying to get laid with um you know so i think i think magic is a really good psychological horror film. Um, I know a lot of people that have seen it, but at the same time, it doesn't really seem to get talked about too much. I think Hopkins is great in the lead role. Um, I think the casting overall is really... Now, the actor's name is actually escaping me, but he was also in Cujo, released in 83, you know, a few few years after this. And he's actually the husband of um, Peggy. Now, you know, his suspicions are correct. Because he does actually believe that she's actually cheating on him, which is actually the case. So his suspicions aren't unfounded or anything. Um, but yeah, obviously he's in the film and uh, yeah, it, it's just a great movie. Now, I, I was probably about 12, 13 years old when I first watched this and it left an impression with me. It really did. Um, <laughs> to me, Fats is just one hell of a creepy dummy. And as I say, the score that accompanies the film, some great editing... Um, I think it's a really solid psychological horror film. I know that Stephen King, I read this recently, that Stephen King isn't actually a big fan of the movie himself, itself. Um, and I believe Tourist Trap, not to compare the two, Tourist Tra Trap, which came out in 79, um, is a film for, for some reason he compared it to Magic and he basically said that Tourist Trap was actually the better movie, blah, blah. But uh, yeah. So I recommend this film to anyone that's, you know, a psychological horror fan. There's actually a film released 10 years later called Pin, which is very much kind of in the same vein. Uh, it's a film that I did talk about on a podcast a little while ago. Um, but yeah. So anyway, that's all I really want to talk about concerning uh, magic. Magic. Um, I mean, there is actually a shot as well in the film that I actually think is pretty chilling. Um, it's actually 
very shortly after the moment that uh, Corky is actually trying to get uh, Peggy to open the door. Um, he's actually given a, a wooden box and, and leaves it there, um, you know, uh, giving a very kind of heartfelt message to her. Um, but uh, he was obviously always afraid to, to, to give it to her when he was when he was younger. I mean, she actually addresses the fact, why didn't why were you so shy? Why were you so quiet? You know, those years ago. And uh, there's actually a shot of, of him stood there, a very kind of chilling shot stood there behind the wall uh, with the knife ready, uh, you know, just waiting for her to, to open the door. Um, it's, it's just such a great psychological horror movie, um, in my opinion. And, uh, yeah, that's pretty much all I'll uh, talk about regarding the film. And uh, thanks to everyone that listened. And uh, if you've liked what you've heard, please feel free to subscribe to my channel, Talk and Stalk. And I'll be back again soon to haunt you and torment you. Take care.